Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you how to use GitHub Copilot to generate code, document code, improve code, test code. Uh, it uses generative AI to do all these things, and it does it pretty well. However, what if you have your own way of coding? Maybe you have a way of naming variables, you have patterns that you like to use, maybe there are libraries that you prefer to use. Can I adjust the output of GitHub Copilot so it codes in the way that I like to? The answer is yes. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to use an example from this open source repository. It's from GHMSFT Intersource. And the repository is called Copilot Playground. I'm specifically going to use this follow standards example right here. It was mostly written by this fellow right here, uh, Jonas. Helen or Helen, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but uh, I want to give that person credit. And I've created a copy of that down here on my desktop. Um, you can see in here there's a file called storeproxy.cs. This is a C sharp project. And in there, there's a method called get order. And it uses this HTTP client right here to call a web service. Like this, it'll call it asynchronously. There's the endpoint, gets back an HTTP response message. And then we want to handle that response. So we want to say handle, handle the response would be okay, but we we already know that Chat GPT, or sorry, the GitHub Copilot is better the more explicit we make our our prompts. So I'll do this. I'll say handle the case where the response is not HTTP. Okay. We want to make sure that if it returns. Uh, uh, HTTP 200, which is the OK response, it'll do one thing and it returns anything else, we'll assume something went wrong. So let's do that. And so here it did this. And then I'll say, read the response and return the order. Here we go. I like that. Oops, tab, enter right there. And return order. OK, so it's it's generating these suggestions. I'm pressing tab and I'm accepting them. And this is good. This works. If it's not anything but a 200, the status code is anything but 200, comes back, then I'm going to throw an exception. Otherwise, I'm going to read the response's content as a string and return that right here, this, this string back. But let's look, take a look at some other, another file here, pet proxy. Notice that it doesn't do exactly the same thing. It has, if the response is not OK, I get an error message, bad news. It tells me the ID. It tells me the status code. It saves all this in a nicely formatted string. It writes that out to the console and then it throws an exception. And then before it returns this, it actually writes that message out that says, OK, this was good for this ID. So I'm, I'm logging some of this stuff right here. I like this. So the trick is I want to leave this open. Let me delete the code that I generated a minute ago. And now, if I do this, you notice the difference. Now it is actually creating something in the same format. Let it tab to accept that. Get the content as a string, tab return tab return and I'm accepting that and now it generated a code that looks very much like this it uses the same pattern here which logging the information in a nicely formatted way before it returns this order github copilot is also smart enough to write code that adheres to tests so if you're doing test driven development this is really useful if I write a test with expected behavior then I can have my code adhere to that test. So for example, here in my test store proxy, I've got a test method that says test negative order, test get order negative ID. And it says, okay, if I call get order and pass in a negative one, that I should have this expected error message. Negative values are not allowed. That's what should be returned, should throw that exception. So now I can write some code that should throw that exception right here. I can write some code that adheres to that. If I go back into my store proxy, then somewhere in here, I want to just say 
handle negative ID value. Enter and it does a check right at the stop, right at the top. If ID is less than zero, throw new argument exception. Negative values are not allowed. And when I do this, that means that in my test, it's, it's looking for this. It knows exactly what it's looking for. It's going to test for that error message. And that will that test will pass because that exception will be thrown if I pass it a negative one. So in this video, I've shown you a couple of ways of using GitHub Copilot to adhere to your coding standards simply by opening up the files with either examples of those coding standards or some sort of hint of the expectation, like in a test right here. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.